God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Does not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of the high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gate, at the entry of the city, at the coming at the doors. Unto you, O men, I cry, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom. Ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that findeth knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. The wisdom is that Jesus saves, and only Jesus saves. The passage I read to you out of Proverbs chapter 8 is a verse that can be used for what we're doing. It's called street preaching. It's called preaching the gospel as the Bible has permitted us to do. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. I'm not going to preach religion. I'm not going to preach politics. I'm not going to preach world current events. I'm going to preach to you that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God doesn't care who will be in the White House in the next four years. God doesn't care what's going on in Turkey. God doesn't care what's going on in France. What God cares about is what His Son has done for you upon Calvary. The gospel that Christ died for your sins, according to the Scriptures. He was buried. And He arose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. You got people picking up guns and killing. You got people are driving trucks killing. You got military killing because they don't want to obey what God has to say. If you want to do and live what God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. No born again Bible believing Christians ever picked up a gun and killed anybody. At least by purpose, by the intent, by a word we call murder. A true Bible-believing Christian will take the word instead of a weapon. The true Bible-believing Christian, according to the Bible, that this is a sword, the Word of God. And we take to you the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6. We come not to kill you. We come that you are going to die. And not by my hands, Lord willing. But death is coming for you. Death is sure. And who knows, you may have an idiot today who will come and take your lives like France. Like Orlando. you got to rest assured that death is coming for you. And Jesus said, in order to be saved, I am the way, 
the truth, and the life. The Bible says that there is an afterlife. There is heaven or there is hell. That's it. And rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will go to hell. Because the righteousness that God expects from you has already been completed and finished by Jesus Christ. You can't do nothing more than what Jesus has already done for God to approve. Your works, your religion, who you are. And Jesus testifies, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. I don't care about your church attendance. I don't care about your money giving. I don't care about your charities. I don't care about who you're going to vote for. What God cares about is what you're going to do with Jesus Christ. There are no Baptists in heaven. There are no Muslims in heaven. There are no Republicans in heaven. There's no cash, check, or money orders in heaven. The only thing accepted is the precious blood of the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That is all. And you go about your business. And you say, God, I'm not going to listen to that man. I'm not going to listen to the Bible. Well, a couple of weeks ago, a bunch of intoxicated people were having a good night partying, and they ended up in a place called hell because they believed not on Jesus Christ. It may happen here. A bunch of people that day went to a fireworks show, and now they're off in eternity. And I'm telling you, religion did that. Religion killed those people. You say, well, aren't you a religion? No. Nope. I am a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. Jesus does not tell us to take a life. He gave His life that you may have eternal life. That's the difference. You are a sinner. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. If you don't think you're a sinner, your death will prove that you are. And as a sinner, you will die. And when you die, you'll face God. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. You may say, oh, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God, but there is a God. And God wrote that passage in the Psalms. And from the words of Daytona Beach, Florida, you can have eternal life. You can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. The love of God is that we come out here and tell you what God expects from you. The love of God is we will tell you what, if you do not do what God tells you to do, what will happen to you. The love of God is that Jesus Christ, God said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him There goes a medical truck. What if that medical truck was for you and you'll never take another breath again? This may be your last day on this earth. This may be the last time that you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Eternal life is held in a book called the Bible. 
Eternal life is hold upon the Lord Jesus Christ. I have not told you my church name. I don't have a collection bucket up here. I have a Bible. A King James 1611 Bible, and that's all I need for you to come to God on God's terms. I don't have a sword. I don't plan on taking anybody's life, but I'm here to have your life come to Jesus Christ that you may be saved. You're born to die. That's it. Whether it be one minute or a hundred years, you're born to die. And when you die, you'll face eternity. And your eternity is based upon what you will do with the Lord Jesus Christ. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Matthew 10. Matthew chapter 10. Loving Jesus is not enough. You've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which can kill the body. That's your current newspaper. That's your news of 2016. People are dying. People are being killed. Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. You cannot kill your soul. Your soul is eternal. You will die, but you will live on. But rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, 28. According to God's words, you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, God will put you body and soul in hell. If you were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you die, the Bible says you'll be absent from the body, present with the Lord. And once you go off into hell, there's no second chance. This morning, all over this world, souls of men went off in eternity. If they can bring politicians science into the farmer's market, why can't I bring Jesus? A farmer's market, employee, they're bringing other people's names here, why won't you allow Jesus? I'm offended. You see, they allow the name of a politician into the farmer's market, but they will not allow the name of Jesus Christ. Those politicians cannot save you, my friends. And when they do, get, if they do get into office, they may become even more corrupt. But my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father, will never be corrupt. And he will be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
Oh, we're in America. We don't have a king. Yeah, you got a nation that's defiled the God of the Bible. God says kings. There were three presidents in the Bible, and two of them were against the Bible-believing president. And you have not ever yet to have a true Bible-believing, born-again Christian in the White House. Oh, you got to read their books and read the in between the lines and read that. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10... Romans chapter 10, verse 9, as I get there, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I am confessing that Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is your only hope. That Jesus Christ is your only salvation. That Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the only truth. He is the only life. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved by Christ and the gospel that He died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And He was uh, buried. And He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. I have a scriptural Jesus Christ, my Savior, the Son of God, who is God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom, him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Here I am. You wouldn't know about the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ unless I came preaching to you about it because your church will not preach the Jesus Christ of the Bible. See, you got churches with bazaars. I've got a Bible. You got a church with carnivals. Carnal. I've got a holy, pure word, a holy, pure Savior. And you may be in a church that doesn't even have the Bible. Look around, my friends. How many people are out here preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ? Not many. A few. We are here to tell you that you're going to die and you're going to face judgment. And that's not popular. I know it's not. But it's the truth. When they put a headstone above your head, you're living somewhere. Either you're praising, smiling, and singing to the Lord God of Heaven. Or you are cursing and torments and pain and agony in hell. And that's based all upon what you do with Jesus Christ now. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Anyway, thank you for throwing those people out. There are no watermelons in hell. Some people say they'll be in heaven. I don't know. I know Jesus Christ will be in heaven. That's enough for me. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. 
The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the water of life. If I can find it, <clears throat> I have a hard time. Luke. The Gospel of Luke, I think 15. No. I gotta get the concordance. Let me read you an account of what Jesus said. Luke 16. Well, I can never remember that. See, I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. I'm not afraid to den deny I'm a sinner. I'm not afraid to, to plead it to the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse me. Now, uh, this happens to be a red letter edition Bible. That means the words of Jesus Christ are in red. I'm going to read to you a passage out of the Gospel of Luke chapter 16 that Jesus, who is God, spoke. And if you don't believe Jesus is God, that's going to be your trouble, your problem, when you prepare to meet that God at the day of judgment and found wanting. Because the Bible prepares you before you die to tell you exactly what's going to happen. And for those who don't believe that Jesus never preached about hell, I tell you, you never read your Bible. I say that without apology. Luke 16. And it came to pass that the beggar died. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. And was buried. And how he lifted up his eyes being in torment. Death is not your conclusion. It's only the beginning. With no time. How important is that? Jesus Christ left heaven and went to the cross and died for your sin and was buried. And arose again the third day, so you will not be dead and buried and wake up in hell. God is love that He does not want you to go to hell. He's put it in the Bible, in Christ's words. And you'll be stupid enough to reject Jesus Christ and go to hell, as many are today. Because they have rejected Jesus Christ. I don't care you're offended, I call you stupid. Because if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are stupid. Because it's a free gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Only a moron would go into hell today. Jesus Christ came that you may have life and have life more abundantly and he told you what hell is like. You're going to die. You're going to be buried and you'll wake up in hell. That's not all. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. You will have your eyeballs in hell. But the Bible speaks of hell as a dark place. You won't be able to see. You'll be blind. You know how many blind people Jesus healed in his lifetime? You'll go into hell and be blind and never be healed. I keep 
losing my place. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. In hell, if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, in hell, you're going to want mercy. You're going to want to come back that Saturday morning to the farmer's market and come to the guy that's in the wheelchair with the Bible and say, I want Jesus. Because Jesus is mercy. And you won't get it. Can you imagine the antagonizing thought of you being in hell in torment and hearing a loud mouth preacher say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved for all eternity? Like a broken record? Will be torment to have me preaching to you in hell as a memory? He knows who Abraham is. He remembers Lazarus. Imagine the day that you could have gotten saved and did it, and God replays that back in your memory while you want hell to give up. You want hell to stop. You want mercy, and you don't get it. All you hear is a loudmouth preacher preach the gospel. Hey, you got to hear my voice for all eternity. That's torment enough. When we're preaching to you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's Jesus speaking. That's not me. Jesus said you can't get to God but by me. And if you don't want to do that, you're going to wake up in hell. You're going to want mercy. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. That tongue that you have will be with you in eternity in hell. Your soul will retain your tongue and it won't have a cell phone to talk to. That will melt and goo. And the man in hell who remains nameless, so you will not have a name in hell. You'll have eyeballs. You'll have a tongue. You want mercy. And you want a little bit of a drip of a water to cool your tongue. So there goes your beer. Beer is not in hell. Because beer is 99% water, and this guy has no water. There is no breweries in hell. There's no alcohol in hell, because alcohol burns up. You are left without mercy. You are left in torment. And you will be there because you rejected Jesus Christ and His gospel and His saving grace. And you do not have to. All you got to do is step out and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Dying, being buried, and ending up in hell. That's all you need to know right now. You need to know that you are a sinner. And if you die with your sins, You'll be cast into the lake of fire. If you die with your sins washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. There's no attendance, there's no 
not giving, there's nothing you do but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. One day you're going to want to listen to the words I speak to you. That day may be too late. Maybe you got five days. Maybe you got five years. Maybe you got fifty years. Who oh, no, knows? I don't know. I made people in Nice. So after the fireworks, I'll, I'll go party, we'll go get an ice cream, we'll go out to eat. And because of them turning away from Jesus Christ, they are in hell today. What about those in Turkey today who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and were killed in that military coup and are now absent from their body, present with the Lord, thanking the person that came to them with a Bible and telling them the way, the truth, and the life? And praising the Lord Jesus Christ that died and was buried and arose again that they may have eternal life. See, you can die in mercy or you can die wanting mercy. That's up to you today, right now. Because you don't know what's going to happen by the end of the day. Jesus is coming. He may come for His church any moment right now. If you're truly hungry for something, I've got Jesus said He's the bread of life and the water of life, and He is the eternal life, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, because I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not telling you that your earthly, worldly walk with Jesus would be wonderful and great. I got a diabetic foot ulcer. But when I die and go to glory, I'm going to get a new foot. I'm going to get a whole new body. The Bible says, all they that live godly shall suffer. Salvation will change your eternal destination. It may not give you a prosperous earthly life. It may make it worse. But it will take you from hell to heaven. And come on, really just ask yourself the question. Whenever I'm going to die, whenever, do you really want to burn in hell? Do you really want to burn in a place called hell? Are you willing to bet it all forever on what you believe and decide what the Bible says? Oh, everybody will get to heaven. Really? I can, I can name some gross crimes that you want to be with in heaven. And the people that committed them?
in your state, what you believe, everybody's going to go to heaven. In the condition that they still are in today as a sinner. But they're all going to go to heaven. Really? How about being washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and being made pure and clean the way God wanted you to be? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you die without Jesus Christ, it will be hell. If you die, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, it will be glory. It will be merciful. It will be graceful. It will be wonderful to be with the God that died for you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. According to that verse, if you reject Jesus Christ, God's going to throw you out like garbage. He's going to throw you in the incinerator. We are here. Mark 16 says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Proverbs chapter 8, which I read to you. Wisdom cries out. This wisdom in the Bible doesn't get you a piece of paper. It gets you eternal life. And you have heard the wisdom that Jesus saved. You have heard the knowledge that Jesus can save you. You have heard the understanding. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What will you do with that knowledge? Will you apply that wisdom? Will you understand the works of God? Eternity is coming.